just getting bigger for the role, packing on more muscle that make you feel a, a certain way? It's a really big difference. Mm -hmm. um, I can easily kind of for better and worse, I can kind of camouflage, you know? Welcome to Movie Club. We got some salacious secrets for you today. Science has largely debunked the effectiveness of subliminal messages. That is, the practice of inserting flash frames that are too quick for the eye to see into a video with the intention of influencing the viewer's subconscious. But that hasn't stopped directors from slipping hidden messages between frames of their films or hiding Easter eggs in a trailer. So work on your pause game and let's see what you can spot. Thor Love and Thunder not only exposes Portman's incredible body transformation, but it also revealed that a lot of great material was left on the cutting room floor. With passing glances replacing hot and heavy emotion, we think that some steamy scenes between her and Hemsworth have been replaced with action and CGI. But we predict that Taika Waititi has left just enough of their super love in the film. We see how Portman's body transformation and incredibly jacked arms can allow her to finally wield that old Norse hammer Thor seems to love so much. When Portman appears from the skies as Jane Foster, she's referred to as the old ex-girlfriend. Jane then gives Thor a knowing look that a long time apart can make the heart grow fonder. And it's almost inaudible, but if you listen closely, you can hear Thor say, I have something worth fighting for. And then of course, we cut to Foster being a super badass woman warrior. You have something worth fighting for. Now that might've felt really quick, but it's a trailer and a teaser. It's meant to give us information subliminally. But what about when you're in the theater and actually watching the movie? Could a director actually give us tips into what will happen later in a film as we're watching it? Well, that's exactly what happens in Black Swan. Remember the trippy and sensual sexy club scene? Well, it tells you the whole entire movie. In the 2010 ballet thriller Black Swan, Natalie Portman is Nina, a dancer who can't stand the pressure of playing the main role in Swan Lake, and goes a little funny in the head. Obsession with perfection, form, appearance, and pleasure drive her character mad. Before her breakdown though, she has some fun times with fellow dancer Lily, played by Mila Kunis. The two go to a rave party together and later get down. We'll save you a trip to YouTube and show you the part of the previous sentence you immediately felt like looking up. The rave party, of course. Let's show you some of what you're talking about. Did you get that? Okay, because this just told you the entire movie. The shots are too fast to see, but if you keep your finger firmly pressed on your pause button, you can see weird stuff, like Nina being stalked by the characters of the ballet, including the one she plays. Hallucinations and visions seem to play a crucial role in Darren Aronofsky's storytelling. He adds those hallucinations in when he wants to remind us of where Nina is going and how her fate is somewhat inescapable. Hopefully no continuity person got fired over this mishap, but Nina dancing with the theater director who actually isn't at the club at all is quite confusing. He later morphs into Rothbart, Swan Lake's feathery villain. This represents the negative influence that Nina is experiencing at this moment. And also the fact that she sometimes dresses up like Cher. And Nina suddenly appears dancing as the Black Swan, which she doesn't do until the end of the film. Premonitions. We also see another scene from the end of the film, although it's in a slightly more drug-induced version, still the performance from the end of the movie. Then come some perfectly normal, disembodied eyes and faces from people in another dimension. It's not a ballet movie until you've got some object horror in there. And then suddenly, everyone in the room is Nina. And we get the wallpaper from Nina's bedroom, which tells you where we're all headed next. She's basically surrounded by different versions of herself from other points in the film. I mean, everything's there. You even see Doc Brown running around in the back. <laughs> Kidding. What does it all mean? Well, it's pretty much walking you through all of the twists and turns that are coming later in the film. All of the plot and imagery gets squeezed into this single minute. And all the things Nina does here, including getting intimate with people who aren't there, seeing her face on everyone, hallucinating the characters as real people, will happen again as the movie Get continues. Get out of my room. I'm just I'm worried about the next act. There are a few other examples of this, namely Beauty and the Beast and Fight Club, where we see death in Gaston's eyes and inappropriate genitalia throughout the film. But remember, subliminal messaging isn't really effective and won't really change your mind about the movie, but it might provide you with crucial information that'll spoil the ending for you. So pour some soda, have a little carbonation, and we'll see you next time.